Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we will go through some practical tips you should know before starting a docking project. So tip number one, do an intense research from the beginning. You should investigate the receptor in detail to verify for any specificity. Uh, you should verify if multiple crystallographic structures are available for that receptor. Check for the difference between them and choose wisely based on the resolution of the structure. An important aspect could be the completeness of the structure as well. As we saw uh, in an earlier videos, some structures are incomplete, so in order to avoid adding uh, capping groups in order to eliminate the additional charges at the end of the terminal, uh, you could find the most complete structure in the first place. PDB database could be a very good starting point to do your research and see if there are any other published uh, 3D structures for your protein. So go to pdb.org and let's search for the transmembrane domain M2 protein. On the left side of the database, you will see different organisms uh, where this protein was expressed and um, the 3D structure was determined. You can also see here different experimental methods that were uh, used for the structural determination. Uh, let's select X-ray in our uh, example here. And down below here, there are other criteria for uh, search definition and refinement, but for the moment, let's go just with this. You see this research resulted in several structures listed here. The high level information of the results listed here contains the PDB code, the short description of the determination method and the protein name. But you can also see here the citation of the article where the structure was published. One thing you can also easily do is go up here and sort the structures based on the resolution, which is, is uh, often very handy uh, when you start your uh, analysis. Honestly, there are other video tutorials presenting the PDB database in much more detail. So here I just wanted to highlight some of the main functionalities I found useful. So tip number two, mind the data, mind the structure. So this tip might sound very strange at the beginning, but it is actually strongly related to the previous point. So while you do your research, you should check for flexible loops on the protein. Mind that the structure of the protein uh, and the coordinates might be defined, but actually the position of the atoms in the crystal structure is um, sometimes unreliable. The protein is flexible naturally, and some parts of the protein are even more flexible than others. So the coordinates defined in the 3D structure represent actually an average of the atoms. And the metric that describes this is the B factor. And here you can see the uh, tag PDB text file and the B factor column for all atoms defined in the crystal structure. So this value is actually strongly related and it is in strong connection with the resolution of the X-ray. And uh, I would like to present you the B factor uh, color coded. So in the presented case, the B factor of this protein ranges from 15 to 75 angstrom. And the higher B factor increases the flexibility of the protein. Um, you can see that the highest B factor is assigned to the hairpin uh, at the top of the protein, which means that uh, this part of the protein is naturally more flexible compared to other parts. Hairpins, um, loops, ions and water molecules are generally the more flexible part and this is normal. But uh, you should consider that if you want to dock a ligand to that flexible part, you have to be aware that in these cases the docking results might not be sufficient to determine the precise uh, ligand target is interaction, especially because uh, the nowadays used docking methods 
they do not fully account for the protein flexibility. They treat the protein, the target, um, as a rigid entity. So, tip number three. You should uh, use previous literature at your advantage and uh, see if there is anything written about the binding site you want to investigate. Chances are there is actually uh, an extensive literature already precisely describing the binding site you want to study. But if you're really rock lucky, then um, chances are that uh, you also have a 3D structure of that protein with maybe another co-crystallized ligand. And if you are uh, that lucky, then usually these structures are a very good starting point to locate the binding site on your target or at least uh, some other binding sites on that specific target. So you should always use everything that can help you at the beginning. Uh, molecular docking is a molecular mechanics based method, which basically means that the atoms are represented like spherical single point masses. For each atom in a molecule, then the partial charges are calculated using a quantum chemistry method. And for each atom type, the van der Waals parameter is also calculated. In very simplified terms, these two parameters, so the partial charges and the van der Waals parameter, are cumulatively represented as the main force field parameters that are then inputted to potential energy function or otherwise called the scoring function in docking methods. Uh, the scoring functions are then used uh, in the calculations and are used to quantify the interaction between the ligand and the target. One important difference between the currently used docking methods are the force fields. So force fields vary between each other, mainly based on the parametrization techniques. Scoring functions enforced in docking programs make various presumptions and simplifications and so they do not fully account for physical phenomena such as dissolvation upon ligand binding or entropic effects or target flexibility. Docking methods uh, with the implemented searching algorithm and scoring functions are mostly able to predict and rank the correct poses, but only if the receptor and the ligand inputs are adequately prepared. As highlighted in previous uh, video, the preparation work is very, very important in order to have reliable results. So that's right, most of the docking programs are not able to deal with prote protein flexibility and are treating receptors as rigid entities, which we all know it is not very likely lively approach. Uh, it is a cheap starting point, docking methods, uh, to make data-driven decision in drug development, but we must be aware of the limitations of this method. And with this I wanted to create a very brief description of what are the practical aspects to be aware when starting a docking project. Docking sometimes uh, so sounds too good to be true. It is a method relatively easy to understand, it is cheap, but I would not like to create the impression that will always give, give you the ground truth. In fact, uh, there is no research method that will give you the right answers all the time at all circumstances. It is late and I'm getting philosophical, so thank you uh, if you managed to stay with me until now. Happy docking!